He was probably the first African leader to be treated by white men as an equal. Now, in his old age, he's practically the incarnation of the history of our time. In Europe, the bloodiest of modern wars was being fought with tanks, machine guns and poison gas. But here, the centuries rolled back as if to King Henry at Agincourt or Richard losing his crown at Bosworth Field. Joining the new League of Nations, he put his faith in the latest post-war watchword, collective security. In such great company, one little country would surely be safe, and none would let another gobble it up. Instead, he hoped that all might compete in helping him to modernize his country and make it worthy of its place in the League. To extend his foreign contacts, he toured the European capitals. In London, the Times described his arrival as an historical event. In Stockholm, he met King Gustav, and the Swedes promised him doctors. In Brussels, he found financiers ready to invest in his country. Governors of Africa's colonial territories came to salute the independent African king. Benito Mussolini, the Italian dictator, proclaimed he would create a new Roman Empire, and he aimed at the one place left for imperial conquest in Africa, Haile Selassie's Ethiopia. And Britain and France would do no more than proclaim an embargo on arms sales to both sides. For Italy, with her own arms, the embargo was a green light. For Ethiopia, it was a death sentence. But for Haile Selassie, the final betrayal came at the League of Nations. Pierre Laval, the French foreign minister, and Sir Samuel Hoare for Britain, proposed to hand part of Ethiopia to Mussolini. Appeasement had triumphed. Collective security was a myth. In the war that followed, Haile Selassie had no chance. Ladies and gentlemen, the second speaker on the list is His Majesty Negus Haile Selassie. He did so with a dignity that has become a legend. Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le... The jeers of fascists in the gallery did not stop him. I am here to claim justice, he said. What reply shall I take back to my people? There was no answer, and there could be none. The League was dead. So, said the Emperor, it is us today, it will be you tomorrow. He created a network of tiny airstrips that broke down the isolation of the interior for the first time. When the 1950s opened, Ethiopian airlines were in business. It was Haile Selassie's first major accomplishment in modernizing his country. Ethiopia's past for the first time came to the aid of the present and made Haile Selassie and his capital the focus of Africa's new hopes. As almost the only independent African ruler after the war, Haile Selassie provided a symbol of self-respect for black men just emerging from white rule. The wind of change had come to Africa. Recognizing the emperor's unique position, the United Nations chose Addis Ababa as its African headquarters, and he embarked on a new political career. The age in which we live, your imperial majesty, is an age of paradox. In his brand new Africa Hall, Haile Selassie presided at innumerable meetings of his new revolutionary colleagues. He became the great African father figure, the great African peacemaker, in the Congo, in Biafra, in Morocco and Algeria. 
it was a strange apotheosis for the King of Kings. He didn't always succeed, but his voice commanded respect, because he alone in Africa had been both victim and victor in the struggle against colonial rule. He alone had been the first martyr of the old League of Nations and was now a founder and guide of the new United Nations. Seeing his influence in the new Africa, the world beat a path to his door. The Organization of African Unity followed the United Nations and set up shop in Addis Ababa. Diplomats and businessmen flocked in. Within a decade, the face of Addis Ababa was transformed. The signs of international affluence towered over the old open drains. With the bankers and diplomats came foreign money and foreign aid. There were new ports, new roads, new dams to be opened. America trained the emperor's army. Russia built his schools. Israel provided technicians. India supplied teachers. Britain brought doctors. France offered culture. Germany sent trade missions. Haile Selassie's old empire had become the new African showcase, and everyone wanted an exhibit there. Today, Haile Selassie is besieged by foreign delegations hoping to catch his ear. He balances these contemporary forces to strengthen his own independence as shrewdly as he juggled half a century ago with the rival tribes and princes in his old fight for power. One day it may be a Japanese delegation, the next day a mission from Maoist China. It doesn't matter what political persuasion they are, they all see Haile Selassie as an essential link to the rest of Africa. Even with Italy, he's made friends again. On a state visit to Rome, 30 years after Mussolini's troops had been driven from his country. His name is everywhere. His presence seems all pervading. His word seems law. In his old age, it looks as if Haile Selassie has routed all his enemies at last, to emerge supreme, as if the all-wise and benevolent Lion of Judah has prevailed. Nearly half the population of Ethiopia now is under the age of 15, and for Haile Selassie their education has always been an obsession. And turned one of his palaces into a university. He's directly responsible for whatever schooling these youngsters get. Haile Selassie is a lonely man now. His wife, two sons, a daughter are all dead. To have survived them for the better part of 55 years in power is something unequaled by any ruler in the world today. No wonder the Lion of Judah has become one of the living legends of our time. Welcome to Straight Up. It's all right, Montague sitting in for Jerry Small. And it's Monday, March 15, 2016. Carla, go ahead. Welcome to Straight Up. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. I'm hearing you. I hope you stop saying you're sitting in for Jerry Small is a casualty of the, the, the present administration. So you are hosting the program. Please say that. You're, you're, hello? Yes, I'm, I'm listening. You're not sitting in for anybody. Well, you're you hosting see, the program. You're see, not the host of the program. Well, you see, and I come now to learn that your name Beth. Is yes. Beth? Yeah, man. Yeah. Elizabeth is the name. <laughs> so it's Elizabeth. Well, well, you see, Beth. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't have a crystal ball in front of me, and I don't have an Obia man. I know. I, so, I don't believe in Obia neither. The, 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 well, there it's you go. No, in my African history, Obia was a religion uh -huh. that offered good to the people of Africa, but it was being demonized when they kidnap the Africans and bring them round. Was here. it? It's a religion, really. A religion well, of high quality. Forgive me then for being Europeanized, but um. Yes. I Anyhow, don't, um, um, I don't I see it as such. Thinking, you see? Uh-huh. The, um... Carla, go ahead. Morning. Welcome to Straight Up. 
All right. Yes, Martin Fox, how you doing? It, 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 it's good to be the leader of the arm um, of the propaganda <laughs> <laughs> unit. You have to ask her. All right. Well, you have no oil. You see, this morning, mm -hmm. we are challenging the management to tell us what is the situation because you can't tell us. We know that an instinct went as a Fox, Fox, case. Fox, let us, hmm? let us stick to the matter of, of um, conducting the show, no? Uh, all right. Why management is so silent? That's all is the show asking. is the show that is, you can, is the is, show that we conducting? No, is, oh. is your small half the program? Are you the, are you the host as of now? We I, can't tell management what to do, you know. Well, we would never do that. But if an infringement has taken place, you must come out and say something. And I'm sure you that can't some cut the things up, and then nobody know hear nothing after. In terms of me, I'm sure that I'll have a, a um. A discussion again to find out uh, more information to give to the listeners. No, but they, 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 but they kept too silent for too long. They kept silent for too long. If kept silent. We are not proposing nothing that has been done wrong, you know, or it. All, right. All we are Fox. saying. Fox. Let us, let us know what is happening. Fox, we'll, um, I, 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 I know you personally. So I'm saying to you that I'll have a discussion with management and mm -hmm. speak with greater clarity mm -hmm. tomorrow. That's all I'm saying, too. Fair enough. You want, is there something else you wanted to raise? No, no, no all right. All right. You know, you know, when we say my say, no, me don't, you know. <laughs> all right, Fox. Thanks yeah, for the man. contribution. Yeah, Caller, go ahead. Welcome to Straight Up. Morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Hello. 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 Jerry took a break, you know, so I, I, I am waiting to hear what happened to Jerry Small, too. Because if, 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 if something go wrong, we would want to know, you understand, and, you know, because enough time you see people call it the program, you know, mm. and try to put Jerry Small in a problem, you know, and he, he, he still forgives them and have them back from the program. So if something go wrong, management could have even look at it and, you know, forgive him to yeah, make him that, the program. That, that, is a, people forgive, you know. that is a conversation that you'd have to have privately with management. You couldn't stop the show um, to have that conversation. No, I will know. we're not going to stop the show, you know. But, you know, we show it there and we don't know because them man, they are useful, man. You see Jerry Small. He, he hold, hold on, hold on, man. Williams. Jerry Small would, will continue to be a useful man. I don't understand what you're saying. So, um, Jerry, not being on air has reduced his usefulness. You, you, you think that he's disabled because he's not behind the mic? Yeah, we want to hear, we want to hear him from the ear, man, because the man, the oh. man is just that talk with black people. The man is not talk about the no labor, I think, and the PMP thing. The man is talk straight, and that's why I'm oh. rating him. So, um, and um, um, black Williams. people, black the people, people wait, that, wait, and black people in this country mustn't care about what happens in the JLP and the PNP. Yes, we have to we have to talk what happened, oh. yes, but but the man you know talk bias. Yeah, you, you understand. So um some persons are talking biasly about what happens in the JLP and the PNP. Yeah, you know, I will get to find that. Uh, who, 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 wait, wait, uh, who we are talking about. Uh, who we are talking now? A media yeah. call bias? No man, no oh. man. No man, no. Oh. Okay. No, so then we do we do we do no, we do 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 no, the main thing is we just want to know if something goes wrong with Jerry Small. Or that, or the I, understand, thing I understand know. the need for knowledge. It was why I told Fox a few minutes ago that I'll have a discussion with management and speak with clarity tomorrow. Because, because no, no, we're not perfect, you know. No, no, we're not you perfect, heard what you know, I said so a while ago? Huh? You hear me say a while ago? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you're making another contribution? Well, that me have to say, you know, and me like how you run the show still, you know, and try not make no politician come and, and, and try to make you get in on a problem here. I'm going to try my best, trust me. I learned because from Jerry. Because you try Jerry Small <laughs> all the while and try it. I understand? learned from him, man. With a labor at our PNP and no peace. You understand? Yes, man. Thanks for the contribution. And yes, keep listening just, to Straight just keep, Up. Just keep it clean and straight. Thank you. Yeah, man, respect. Thank you. She said them for clean out the obia. Out of some of the cheers, them. A caller took me, a, a texter took me, and I must tell you, um, for saying that Obia is a bad thing. I didn't, I don't recall though saying that Obia was a bad thing. I recall saying that it wasn't in keeping with, um, with my 
Christian beliefs. Well, well which makes it, in, in my view, um, a sort of sinful thing. I know that some people go and be vexed and some people go and cuss. And I am aware of our traditions. I am aware of the history. Um, I am aware of, of, of from where it comes. But I am also aware that we have adapted the Christian faith as our own. And that um, Christianity has a little something to say about it. All people tell stories to make themselves feel good. And there's nothing wrong with that. So long as you are clear about what you are doing. The Hebrews copied African stories to make themselves feel good and said that was us. Then we come down and believe it. When the story of Joseph and Mary, and I've personally seen it, in the great lodge of Luxor, was carved in stone. And the story existed 2,000 years before Abraham arrived. The story of Cain and Abel is an old African story, was an old African story before they got that. And there's a whole book of flood stories. Everybody, every culture has its flood story. Now, the Bible is not less a Bible and not less holy because it is part fiction part history and part folklore. It is still a book of inspiration. It is still a book of spirituality. And you can separate one thing from the other and keep it. I didn't say throw it out. I said understand it. I think you can get more out of it by understanding it. And what I'm saying is that the Hebrews copied African folklore and integrated African folklore into the book, but they personified it, saying this happened to, to, to us, when in fact it, did, it didn't happen to them at all. They merely said it happened to them. All right, now, when they had to face the Pharaoh, who knew not Joseph, and when he said, those of you who wish to obey African law may stay. Those of you who do not wish to obey African law will have to go. Those are the ones who left Africa. Now that's the origin of the essence. All the Jews did not leave Africa because some of them said that they could stay and live under African law. Jews remained in Africa. Some of them were there when the Romans arrived thousands of years later. Now, the Exodus is one of the best known stories in human history. And there is not one iota of proof that it occurred. The Bible is not less holy because of it, but this is a part of Hebrew myth. And it is a good story to teach faith. Whether it is true or not, it is a good teaching lesson. Why can't we draw the lesson from it and start worrying about whether it's true? Now, if you know the geography of Africa, you know that the 16-mile land bridge connecting Africa with Western Asia. When the Jews came in, they walked in. They could have walked out. <laughs> so they didn't have to leave by water at all. <laughs> and if they left by water, they would have to leave further down. And if, if they left that way, then they would end up in Yemen. It didn't go with the geography. Look at the geography. Look at where the land, this is before the Suez Canal. 
Thousands of years before. Look, the Christian story is one of the most beautiful stories in the history of the world, but you have to separate one thing from the other and keep the story. Don't throw out the story because it is mixed with a whole lot of things that are questionable. You can enhance the story by understanding it and understanding to what extent the story is embellished by folklore. All right, now, 670 people came in. 70 Hebrews came in. 600,000 goes out and still leaves some. <laughs> Would 70 people create that many people, even if they spent all time creating people? <laughs> so what we have here is that a lot of Africans, not ethnically Hebrew, became converted to the faith. And they were of another religious persuasion but not of another ethnic persuasion. And then, at this time, religion was so sharp in the minds of each people, sometimes a religious person, a person in one religion, didn't feel as safe as he thought he should, though religious tolerance was much better then than it is now. All right, now, what did they take out of Africa? They came into Africa without a clear language, without a clear religion, and without a clear culture. When they left, they had all three. Africa had made the Hebrews a people. The early Hebrews became a people and enter history through Africa. And you do not have to argue about whether they were white, black, or otherwise. The only whites who entered the area were Greeks and Romans. Right. So now if you want to figure out where the white Jew came from, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> the European white Hebrew is nothing but a European related and converted to the faith. In the 12th century AD, there were arguments in Europe because the Africans and the Arabs were controlling Spain and the Mediterranean. There was arguments for whose fight you're going to join, the Arabs or the Christians. And there was a group of people who didn't want to join either one of them. They sought an alternative, and they chose Judaism. So the Caucasian Jew is just a European who chose Judaism. And he has no ethnic relationship to the biblical Jew at all. Uh, Carla, go ahead. Morning. Morning. Welcome to Straight Up. Morning, dear. Everybody at least make one mistake in them life. Mm -hmm. okay? And a little thing you say, well, me, you know, I am so happy that me is a part of God. You're yeah, the creator. You understand me? That one, dear. Because, you see, in, there's many a slip. You, 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 also, you also heard when I said that... Um, we're going to discuss it properly tomorrow. I know. The Jamaican I know. public needs to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on now. The Jamaican public needs to discuss or to hear discussions about other things. Mr. Warmington gets state minister of works. We might want to discuss and know why. We might want to know what will happen with Miss Dalrymple Philibert. I'm making you know that the public yeah, needs to. Me, but, but I am aware so of I'm that. I'm going and to that's be. That's why me saying this want to say to you, we want to inject a little thing that uh -huh. you see. You make a little statement there, which I recall, but I have it on tape because everything is on tape. Yes. But what me saying is that when Jerry made, when, um, when Jerry Small came out and say 
it say that, 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 that a while ago you came on and somebody asked you what time what date it is mm -hmm. and you said the 14th yes the, sir. the, 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 the 15th and it says the 14th mm -hmm. so whoever made that mistake you saw it in front of you you mm -hmm. understand me yes. and you never really have your composure to you know have your you thing in taxi you know that today is the 14th you mm -hmm. understand me mm -hmm. so what I'm trying to say is that everybody make the little mistake or whatever. You know, there are times when I attempt to make, to do, uh, make create something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait there. There is a big difference between little mistake and big mistake, you know. I'm and we, say, and we're not, say, and, and, and listen, and we're not going to have judgment on this issue on here. Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? So you need to have a discussion about something but as if you... I am not discussing that thing. I am just trying to say It's coming up to 9.30 now. There are times no when I try to make um, a create an account, like uh -huh. a Google account or so, uh -huh. and you can't. I'm not sure maybe you have Why you, 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 you just made that point a, a minute ago, and I'm saying that, all right, we need to take the 9.30. So now you've not managed to speak about what it is that you called to talk about. I'll call that. Yeah, thanks for the contribution. Uh, Carla, go ahead. Welcome to Straight Up Morning. Hi, good morning. I almost get mad with you, you know, but I decided not to. <laughs> Thank you. Because I'm staying there 25 minutes waiting. Anyway, Flo, this morning, good morning again to you, and I must say welcome. Mm -hmm. And I think the new stock, I think the, the station need to come and tell us what is happening. Jerry's on leave, you know, just pop something a little snow, but don't just keep us like that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, they have the right. To do what, what to do it or not, but he's a public figure, mm -hmm. so they should say something to us, you know, let us know what's going on and welcome okay. to straight talk to you. That was Cleveland talking about Colin Campbell and you being a part of the PNPYO. JLP can't do nothing wrong for him. Uh, I, I, I hear you. I, I don't know who Cleveland is, but Cleveland looks like um, he, he does some deep research. Because uh, that would have been a long time ago. Thanks for the contribution. 